What is a quasi? What is a quasi? Quasi? You can say it either way. Uh, here you have a picture. If you look it up, you'll see stuff like this out there. Okay, and you say, well, "What am I staring at? What is? It? I mean, they're pretty pictures, you know. Uh, but what are we staring at?" And here's another uh, picture of the same thing. Okay. Okay. So these are what people uh, usually illustrate for quasis, quasis. Okay. Okay. So what are we staring at? What are these things? They don't look like uh, things because they look like things in motion. They were all uh, moving pictures, not snapshots. Okay, and so it seems like it's got something to do with behavior. When you look up the word uh, quasi or quasi, okay, uh, this is what you find. Okay, you find that uh, it means just the word quasi, right? As if, okay, or uh, manner of acting. Okay, like it relates to behavior. In fact, uh. Uh, one famous thug, Quasimodo, okay, uh, from uh, the Hunchback of Notre Dame. Um, uh, he got that name because he was delivered at the doorsteps of the church there um, on Quasimodo Sunday, uh, which are the first few words of one of the uh, things that they read in uh, the Catholic Church. Okay? Quasimodo Chanity Infantes. Okay, so um, what does it mean? It means how something behaves. It re quasi or quasi or quasi refers to behavior. It does not refer to a thing, a standalone static thing. So we're going to be talking about behaviors. Keep this in mind. Uh, word behavior, how something uh, behaves. Okay, and so here you have it. Um, okay, down the other side. Give me a second here. Here we have. Uh, a definition of quasi-particle. Quasi-particle and collective excitations are closely related. What? Emergent phenomena. Emergent phenomena. What do you mean? Uh, I thought uh, they're talking about particle and it's an emergent phenomena. Doesn't sound like a thing. And here uh, we look up emergent phenomena to find out what that is. Here's our emergent properties. When uh, simple entities interact to produce more complex ones, an emergent behavior or emergent property can appear when a number of simple entities operate in an environment, forming more complex behaviors as a collective. Occurs when an entity is observed to have properties its parts do not have on their own. Properties or behaviors that emerge only when parts interact in a wider whole. Okay, so uh, we're talking about, again, behavior and emergent, meaning, you know, that uh, out of a group, some behavior uh, emerges, is created, is born, and that somehow people can measure or not observe because a lot of this stuff is uh, microscopic, so they cannot observe it like see with their eyes. They can measure something there, and they call this behavior a particle. That's what's going to happen here. Okay, and So it says, arising when a microscopically complicated system such as a solid behaves as if, right, behaves as if, it contains different weakly interacting particles in vacuum the aggregate motion of electrons, for example. Okay? Uh, collective excitations include the phonon, a quasi-particle derived from vibrations of atoms in a solid, and the plasmons, a particle particle <laughs> derived from plasma oscillations. So they call it a particle, but we're not talking about a particle. We're talking about a bunch of moving things collectively called a particle. Okay? It's like you're saying, what is a table? Well, a table is all these atoms, and the electrons are moving within atoms, so a table is a bunch of moving electrons. No, no, that's not what a table is. A table is what I point to. That's called a table. But see, these people are turning concepts, dynamic concepts, into a physical object. They're saying uh, that this movie is a photograph called a quasi-particle. And at the bottom of another source uh, says a quasi-particle refers to a physics concept. Okay? Concept? A concept is a particle. <laughs> in which highly stimulated states of matter are viewed as elementary quantum particles in their own right. Again, they're turning a concept, they're, they're telling you right in your face that, you know, they're turning this concept into an object, into a thing, into a particle. And you would think a particle, you know, because when people think of particles, they think of a, you know, a tiny little ball, something like this. You know, they say, that's a particle. Maybe a little smaller than this one, right? Uh, we're talking about a speck of dust, grain of sand, maybe a, a seed, tiny seed. Uh, that's a particle. That's what people imagine for a particle. And so they use the word particle, but particle is very, very misleading because it has nothing to do with particle, with a notion that everybody has in their minds of what a particle is. Okay, so here we have um, uh, uh, what a particle is. We talked about this the other day. A particle is essentially a field, okay? So you have this field, whatever a field is, it just covers the entire universe, 
some kind of field, maybe gravitational field, electric field, uh, magnetic field. You have all these fields out there. And they're all somehow different. Uh, electric universe says it's all the same. Okay, great. But we have these fields. We don't know what this field is. Okay, and somehow it's vibrating locally. Okay, and so here it is, uh, an illustration of the field vibrating locally, and it's going to be known as a particle. Here it is. Okay, so that's a particle. Particle is some kind of vibration of this uh, web that extends all the way to the edge of space-time, if space-time has an edge, okay? And it's vibrating, and it's known as a particle, okay? So now we know what a field is. I mean, what a particle is, it's a vibration, a local vibration of a field. Okay, so what is a quasi? Well, the quasi, if you take many of these now, we're gonna take many of these, and we're gonna build a quasi with it because it's a collective, um, or a collection of particles that are moving, essentially. Here it is. Okay, so that's a quasi, the whole thing, okay? Not one of those, but all of them. That's known as a quasi. So we have the, the single one and you have the many, okay? So we get, you get the idea, hopefully, that we have a local vibration of a field that's gonna be a particle. We have many of these particles and that's gonna be the quasi, okay? And uh, so, but what is a field? You know, I mean, you see all those little lines, what are they? What, what are we talking about? What do we, I mean, if you see a hummingbird vibrating, you say, okay, that's a hummingbird, but I can take a snapshot of that and say, okay, what do I get when I take a snapshot? Well, I get a hummingbird. I get some kind of bird, some object in front of me that has shape, right? Uh, but when you do that with a field, uh, you don't get uh, these little lines. What you get is a bunch of numbers because the field is defined as a bunch of numbers that are vibrating. <laughs> so here it is. This is a field. So it's a field, a physical quantity that has a value for each point in space and time. And so what is a physical quantity? Well, it's a physical property of a material or system that can be quantified by measurement. And they talk about, you know, the um, given example of uh, 32.3 kilograms being a physical quantity of mass. Okay, great. And so what is a physical property? It says any property that is measurable, whose value describes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. In other words, it's a property and it describes, it's measurable. And that has very little to do with physics. It's got to do a lot to do with mathematics, mathematics, because we don't measure in, in physics and we do not describe. What we do in physics is explain. We need to explain how the universe works. Anybody can describe a chair and say how uh, that it's brown, that it's got four legs, it's got a backrest. You know, they, you can describe a chair. Does that make you a scientist because you can describe it both uh, qualitatively and quantitatively? And what is a property? Well, a property is a characteristic of an object. A red object is said to have the property of redness. Okay, so the, uh, it's just some feature that uh, an object has. Okay, so if that's what uh, a field eventually is, then we're not saying much about, you know, we're not saying it, it's an object, it's a property of an object. And there you have a measurement. What is it? The quantification of attributes of an object or event. Okay, so we have a bunch of concepts. That's all we have. We have no physical objects so far. We don't know what a field is because it's just a bunch of numbers. A physical quantity that has value at each point in space and time. And there you have it. Uh, there's, uh, there's your field on the right. Okay? And if it vibrates, well, you have a particle. <laughs> and if a lot of them uh, vibrate, uh, well, then you have what is known as a quasi-particle, okay? a quasi-particle, whatever. And so here's a, a summary of that, uh, the conclusions, OK? OK, uh, you have the field. What is it? Excited values. <laughs> Uh, what is a particle? It's an excited field. Okay, what is a quasi-particle? Well, it's a many excited particles. <laughs> okay, so now you know what all these things are. You know what a quasi is. Yeah, quasi, quasi quasis. Okay, so that's it. The, one of the problems we have here is that um, you don't find uh, any of these in the standard model. I mean, if these are particles, you would think that, <clears throat> you know, you could fill the standard model with it. And here's the standard model, okay? And you don't see any quasis in there. And you say, well, why not? Well, maybe because they're not fundamental, you know, and, um, you know, uh, they've taken a lot of the fundamental ones out of there. Do we know whether the electron is fundamental? Do we know whether the muon is fundamental? I mean, maybe they're made out of more subparts. Are they going to remove the muon and the electron once we find, you know, what to put in there? You know, so, so this, is, this is the issue. The issue is, uh, are they ever going to reach a fundamental particle? Are they interested in reaching a fundamental particle? Uh, how do they plan to get there? I mean, uh, smash uh, particles forever with uh, ever bigger colliders to see what if, if you can smash that particle, what you get out of it, and, and then you, uh, you take the electron, you break it into pieces, you call that the A and the B or the C or whatever. Is, is that what, uh, what uh, these scientists do? They just smash particles and give them names without understanding anything?
you know. Okay, so um, if uh, they're not in a standard model, where, where do you find the quasies, the quasis? Well, here you have, there's a list of them in the uh, Wikipedia, and you can find all of them there, all the ones that I guess they found to date, or that they invented to date. And what are we staring at? We're staring at a list of so-called particles, quasi particles. And what are they? They are just collective behaviors. So they have a collective behavior of many atoms, and they call these motions as these interrelated emergent properties of this collection of atoms or particles or whatever, <clears throat> assuming they're particles, right? And, uh, and whatever behavior they have, they call that a particle. They call it a quasi-particle. So it's the craziest thing on, on Earth, you know, I mean, it makes no sense whatsoever. Uh, certainly, the word particle in there is very misleading because people say, oh, a quasi-particle, some kind of exotic particle. No, it's not a particle at all. It's a behavior of many particles. That's what it is. Emergent properties that come out from single particles, which they don't understand to begin with, but then they have the collection of them, and they have some emergent behavior, and they call that whole thing now a particle. And they're referring not to the to the individual, to the thing, they're referring to the behavior of all these particles. So if you have the, uh, you know, the wind blowing all the trees in a forest, you have a quasi, a quasi forest, uh, whatever, you know, you have the motion of all the trees. <clears throat> that's more or less what it's all about. And uh, here you have uh, one uh, group of so-called physicists and they have created a new magnetic quasi particle. City of College, City College of New York Center for Discovery and Innovation of the Physics Department have announced the creation of a new type of what? Magnetic quasi-particle generated by coupling light to a stack of ultra-thin two-dimensional magnets. Okay, and so what is all this about? What do you mean they've discovered a particle? It says this breakthrough lays the foundation for an emerging strategy to artificially design materials by ensuring their strong interaction with light. Well, it sounds like they're talking about technology and not about science. Okay, uh, it says implementing our approach, one of the uh, fellows uh, who worked on the project, implementing our approach with magnetic materials is a promising path towards efficient magneto optical effects. Achieving this goal can enable their use for applications in everyday devices like lasers or for digital data storage. These people, these arrogant uh, so-called physicists, they're not physicists at all. These people are into technology. They're into doing measurements, giving names to things, and they don't understand any not a bit of what they're doing. They don't understand what's going on. All they know, they measure they, they, whatever they, the effect they are able to measure, and they say, oh, we can use this for this technology. But that's, what's that got to do with understanding what a quasi-particle is? You know, I mean, uh, uh, you're taking this collection, collective behavior, and you're saying, we can use it. You still don't understand what it is. Like taking a magnet and saying, oh, look, a magnet picks up iron filings. I can use this for something. Yeah, but you cannot explain how the magnet attracted the iron filings. That's what we want. That's what a physicist wants to understand. But to say that it does, and we've proven it, we've measured it, we know how fast it does, and all this, uh, all these descriptions, and saying I can use it for technology, that doesn't make you a scientist. It doesn't make you a physicist because you still don't understand squat. That's the issue. Okay. And so one fellow asked the question. He said. Um, uh, I, in, relation, in, in relation to what I had said, I said a physicist is an individual who can explain the physical mechanism that underlies phenomena such as gravity, magnetism, electricity, or the workings of the atom. Okay, so that's what a physicist is. A physicist is someone who can explain a mechanism. You have to explain how the universe works, how Mother Nature does things, how Mother Nature does gravity, how it does magnetism, electricity, and so on. That's what you have to explain as a physicist. But to say that, you know, the magnet picks up iron filings and uh, the spoon always falls to the floor and during gravity and so you haven't explained anything. All you did was observe, measure and say um, I was able to measure how fast or how much it weighed or whatever, how much time it took. That doesn't make you a scientist. You're not using your brain when you do that. All you're doing is measuring and making a little equation that represents your measurement. That's not a scientist. So Bell says, I don't get it. No physicist can explain all this either. Yeah, but a physicist can. But you're, you're confusing these people for physicists. They're mathematicians, okay? So we have to explain what a mathematical physicist is, okay? And people, these people call themselves physicists when they're not physicists. They're mathematical physicists with quotations. They're mathematicians. That's all they are. <clears throat> all they can do is describe, measure, uh, give you an equation. They cannot explain how this universe works, which they dismiss as philosophy. Physical interpretations, they say that's not part of science. So when people go to places like war and they say, look, I want to know how, how this works, how that works. How do you do gravity? How do you do electricity? 
these people begin with equations says, oh, we understand. We understand the equation. When you say, well, how does it work? Oh, that part we don't understand because that's not part of our job description. <laughs> so yeah, they dismiss explanations as philosophy. And that's where the problem is. We have to determine what science is, what physics is. And for the last 400 years, since the so-called scientific revolution in the 17th century, <clears throat> the mathematicians took over and they started doing measurements and experiments and equations. And here we are 400 years later, not one of them can tell you, you know, how this, what causes this spoon to fall to the floor, to fall downwards. What is pulling on it? Or pushing, if you want to do it. They cannot come up with a mechanism, especially with a push mechanism. There's no mechanism you can do, uh, represent gravity with push, push gravity. Anyways, that's the issue. The issue is that we have this quasi, quasi particle, and it's just a behavior that they observe, meaning that they measure the effect, they call that an observation, and they can use it for some technology to develop or in some way. They have no idea what's happening in that tiny world uh, called a quasi-particle, which is a movement of a bunch of particles. Each one is a vibrating field, and no one knows what a field is other than you know a bunch of numbers. In other words, what is it? Just measurements taken of the strength of maybe a gravitational field or an electric field or a magnetic field. So they measure the strength and it dies off the farther away you get from ground zero. And then they have those values and they say, well, it's a vibrating field. So what are they vibrating? The numbers, because they still don't know what a field is.